Okay, so it's been brought to my attention that I am way too positive about Disney Star Wars, that maybe I'm some kind of shill or something like that, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. It's horrible. I'm not getting paid by Disney. I'm not getting paid by Lucasfilm or nobody slipping money into my pocket. I'm just a small YouTuber trying to make videos about how much I love Star Wars, and I do love Star Wars in all of its forms, its perfections and its impurities but I do have criticisms about some of these Star Wars projects. So today, I'm going to give some of the people what they want. Yeah, it's just a few people. I'm going to give my criticisms of some of the Disney Star Wars shows. Now, that's not saying that these made me hate the shows by any means. It didn't. It just means these are things I didn't totally agree with, but these aren't my stories to tell. They're my stories to watch. Now, I can like them if I want to, or I can just ignore them if I don't like them. And that's what I do. I ignore certain things that if I don't like it, and I'm looking at you, Star Wars Resistance. I say that a lot. And it isn't that I don't like Resistance. It just didn't click with me very well. Much like the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special, even at six years old, I was watching it on TV as it was airing, and I was thinking, what the hell is this? The only redeeming part was the loyal Wookiee that featured Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. So I can't say I love that either. I mean, it's just childish entertainment, I guess. But I'm not going to sit here and keep rambling on. So before I get into my criticisms or, I don't know, disagreements with some of the Star Wars shows, hit the subscribe button, share the video with some Star Trek fans. Yeah, yeah, get them where it hurts. And like the video. It really does help my channel grow, and I really appreciate all of you for being here. Now, don't forget to stick around for the entire video because I do have quite a bit to get through here. Now, before I do go on with the negative aspect of this video, I do want to share something positive. A longtime channel supporter, Marcus Aponte, has asked that we send prayers to him. He's having a really tough time now in Puerto Rico trying to find uh, equitable work. And this is something that I think everybody should have. Everybody should have something that can sustain their life. And please send him some positivity, some prayers, something. Help him get on his feet. That would be so awesome. He's helped this channel out so much, and I think it's only right that I share that karma with him. Okay, now let's get on with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the first I'm going to start off with is The Mandalorian. Yes. It begins in season one and goes all the way through the Book of Boba Fett and into the Mandalorian season three. And that is Grogu. Not a huge fan of Grogu. Don't dislike him. I just think he's kind of out of place for the story. Now, while I do admit that he has brought in a lot of new fans, the cuteness of him is beginning to wear off. And you can tell by the viewership of the Mandalorian season three. Not as many people that thought Grogu was cute at the time of seasons one and two felt the same way during The Mandalorian season three. Yeah, I'm not saying everybody thought he was annoying or anything, but come on, look at me, I'm Grogu. I do cute little Grogu stuff. And that's basically what he is. He's just a cute throw-in to the show. Not a bad character, just seems a little bit out of place. And he is the beginning of the millions of millions of Jedi that we are seeing that survived Order 66. I'm not saying it's too many of them. I'm just saying it's more than we were led to believe in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and even A New Hope when both Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda said that they're all but extinct. Now Jedi are crawling out of the woodwork from everywhere. Even that crappy one in Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, the guy that got hung in town square. Poor fella. I don't see how he lived that long. And now with the Mandalorian also, I feel like the dialogue in seasons one and two were clunky. Yeah, but Star Wars has always been set up that way. It's always had clunky dialogue and weird dialect and all that. And it just, eh, it's set up as a 
family drama like a soap opera, so I understand why the dialogue is so strange, but doesn't mean I can't sit here and have a tiny nitpick about it, and that's all it is. It's just a tiny nitpick. Now, let's move on to the Book of Boba Fett. I have a couple nitpicks with that one, and one of them is that we have an old squishy Boba Fett walking around saying, I am Boba Fett a lot. Well, show me. Don't tell me. I want to see it. I want to see how you are because you showed it in The Mandalorian Season 2. Boba Fett is my favorite character in the Star Wars franchise, and that kind of just put me off a little bit, just a little bit. It really isn't that big a deal because the story itself was pretty decent. And now another nitpick of the Book of Boba Fett is the Scooter Gang, and everybody has a nitpick with that one. I just felt like this was kind of a cheesy thing to put in there and have a little slow chase throughout the streets of Mos Espa. It just didn't fit right for me. Eh, but you know, what did they, they were in the show for about, what, 10 minutes altogether, so it wasn't really that big a deal. I can fast forward through that part and still be okay with the story. But my next little bit is about Boba Fett himself yet again. When he had all the heads of the crime families sitting around the table and they all said, yeah, we're not going to help you, but uh, we'll stay out of your way. He should have dropped one of them into the Sarlacc pit or gave uh, Kersantan a little nudge so he could come up behind him and stick a vibroblade in their back. Show him your power, buddy. And instead of saying, okay, yeah, okay. But the biggest issue I had with the Book of Boba Fett was none other than Luke Skywalker being in it with Grogu. To me, it really had no place in there, and that should have been saved for The Mandalorian Season 3, not in the middle of the Book of Boba Fett. Yes, tell how Din Djarin got to Mos Espa to help out, because I thought that was a great addition to the show. I thought that Din Djarin really fit in there with him because Boba Fett had helped Din Djarin for a time and now it's time to repay the favor. Just leave out the whole bit with the chain mail and the Grogu and the Luke Skywalker. It really didn't work for me. Not that I hate Luke Skywalker. I just didn't feel like he belonged in that show. Okay, let's move on to Andor Season 1. I really only have one nitpick with it and it's not because of the slow pace in the beginning. Sorry, that's how storytelling is. It's not always John Wick action all the way through. But my nitpick is Cyril Karn and Dedra Moreau. Why do they have to be a love interest? Why does there have to be a shared moment? They're in the middle of a battle. People are dying all around them. People from their side of the fence are dying, and they're sharing this beautiful moment. Uh, no. It didn't work. And maybe include that in season two or something or some kind of novel. I don't know. But that just didn't work for me. The rest of the show is great to me. But I just didn't like that. Okay, so let's move on to the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Now, this series worked for me very well because it helped me understand why Obi-Wan Kenobi in A New Hope lied to Luke Skywalker. He flat out lied. Call it what you want. He lied. The dude lied to him. He just flat out told him that Vader and Anakin were two different people and Vader killed Anakin. Well, Obi-Wan Kenobi helped me understand why he said that. But I do have a nitpick. And it's probably the same nitpick that most people have about the show. And that's Reva getting stabbed in the stomach twice and surviving both times. Now, a lightsaber is not hot. It's not going to melt you. It's... It cauterizes wounds. That's already been determined. Yes, Qui-Gon used it to heat a door and melt through it, but that's steel. That's a lot different than flesh and bone. Steel does not close in on itself when it's heated. It falls apart. Now, with Reva being stabbed in the stomach as a child, you'd think she'd say, I need to stay away from that dude. That Anakin dude is bad news. He stabs kids. What's he going to do when I'm older and I'm trying to get revenge? He's not just going to stab me. Well, unfortunately, he did. He just stabbed her in the same spot. And I guess the scar she'd had before was just enough to keep her insides from being pushed out of her back. I don't know. Uh, it's just that didn't work for me. But it wasn't enough to ruin the show. Because like I said, Obi-Wan Kenobi helped me 
understand why he thought the way he did in A New Hope. And that's what it was all about, the progression of Obi-Wan Kenobi. But this is about nitpicks, not things I like, because we all know I like a lot. But the character of Reva, I really didn't click with her well at all. Now, I respect the actress that tried to portray what she was given, but yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Reva. But I do understand her point in the show. I just thought it could have been done a little bit differently. Yeah, but now let's move on to The Mandalorian Season 3. The biggest complaint I have with that is that his clan, the Children of the Watch, acknowledge that the Darksaber is this right to lead, yet the armor is still telling him what to do, telling him that he is not a Mandalorian. Paz Vizsla, you're not a Mandalorian, even though he beat up Paz Vizsla in the Book of Boba Fett and showed him that he has the right to hold the Darksaber, he still went along with these rules. Now, call it a Mandalorian code or whatever, or just their sect and how they interact with each other or whatever. I just thought that was cheesy. He could have held up the Darksaber and look, said, look here, lady. See what I got? That means I can make the rules. You don't make the rules anymore. But he didn't do that, so that kind of irked me. I guess that goes along with the Book of Boba Fett and Din Djarin's part in that, too. He could have just said, look, you tell me I'm not a Mandalorian? Look what I got. Uh, the Mandalorian weapon. I got the Mandalorian armor. I'm wearing Beskar. I'm carrying blasters. Weapons are my religion. I'm the Mandalorian leader. You listen to me now. But alas, that is not what we got. And instead, we got the armorer saying that Bo-Katan Kreese is a Mandalorian and can remove her helmet. Um, uh, I understand the premise of it, but come on, lady. Be consistent. You're not consistent at all. But I guess when you need help retaking your homeland, you're going to take all the help you can get and just say, ah, screw it, anybody can get in. That's fine. But Bo-Katan Kreese was ready to accept that she was never allowed to remove her helmet again. She was ready to take on that doctrine. And then for no reason, the armor just says, just take your helmet off. You're fine. You're cool. All right, I don't want to keep going on about that. Okay, instead, let's move on to the Ahsoka series. As much as I love this series, I think it's wonderful Star Wars art. Sorry for those of you who hate it. You know, just go watch Rebels and the Clone Wars. This show just continues those stories, and it does an amazing job at bringing it to live action. But there are nitpicks. And my biggest nitpick is that Thrawn, once again, is shown as incompetent. Where the books, if you have read them, all nine of the Thrawn books, or even more, I think, that Thrawn is not incompetent. He's a genius. The dude is can figure out any situation and get ahead of it. But in this, he's not really ahead of it. Yeah, he still has Ezra Bridger on his ship floating around in the ductwork. Uh, I don't know. I just hope they do more justice to the character of Grand Admiral Thrawn when the next season or the Mandalorian movie or whatever else they include him in. I hope he they do a better job with him. Timothy Zahn, you need to get on them. You need to say, look, Thrawn's not an idiot. Quit making him look that way. But I don't want to keep going on and on and on with this because I don't know how people are going to react to me giving these criticisms because I don't hate Star Wars. I don't hate any of these shows because of those little nitpicks. It's just the way I am. If I had a problem with nitpicking things and hating it, then I would hate the original trilogy because George Lucas never had a plan for all three movies. If he did, he would not have made Luke kiss Leia or vice versa. Leia kiss Luke. That's just weird. If that's what he planned, that is odd, very awkward, and somebody needs to have an intervention with George Lucas and say, look, dude, we don't kiss our sisters. It's just the way we do it here. Sorry. But if I also had a problem with little nitpicks and hated an entire movie or show because of it, then I would hate Attack of the Clones because to me, a lot of the action felt more like a video game than actual live action. And that's because of all the CGI used and all the green screen used. It was very put off for the actors. They all complained about it, saying it was really hard to act against just a green background. And I understand that, but I didn't hate it. I also didn't like 
parts of the animation or the effects like Count Dooku flying on the speeder that just seemed odd that didn't work out very well did it but I love Attack of the Clones I think it's great Jango Fett made that movie for me he was just a badass and he wasn't the only thing I do like the story that was told in it even though the dialogue was a little bit clunky okay it was a lot clunky I don't hate it because of that I think it just adds to a nuance to it and that's how I feel about all these other ones if I don't like a scene enough I'll fast forward through it and just get on with the story and I mean it's like playing Jedi Survivor and beating the story mode and not taking on any of the side quests you can do that I've done it I played all the way through and only completed about a third of the game it can be done now that with all these nitpicks like i said before i love star wars and i love all of its forms even though i might not agree with some of them and i just leave those alone and understand those are part of the universe now and that i don't have to watch them that's just the way it is and that should be the way it is with everybody appreciate it for what it is and don't sit there and nitpick over screws and bolts or whatever bricks and screws I don't know. I don't even know where that saying came from. I just heard it around a lot. Anyways, so that's all I've got for today. And until the next video, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching. And remember, this is the way. And positivity in Star Wars can be the only way.